Uh, you have a patient with acute pericarditis with a fusion. Tamponade has not yet developed. In your ward, you have a patient who is already diagnosed with acute pericarditis and patient is developing a fusion. Right? Actually, you should diagnose the tamponade as soon as it develops. Is that right? So what you will do, you will, of course, you will keep the patient hospitalized or even in outpatient, if patient come with acute pericarditis and some effusion, right, you have done your test, you will immediately hospitalize the patient. So you hospitalize, hospitalize the patient and then monitor the patient. First step is, in case of acute pericarditis with pericardial effusion, step number one is hospitalization and with that, you monitor the patient. Now you will monitor for what? Of course, you are worried that uh, patient should remain hemodynamically stable and you keep on looking for the signs of uh, hemodynamic deterioration. As I told you that you will monitor the pulse. Of course, patient should be on cardiac monitor on ECG, right? There is no need to tell that. And look for the back triangle. That you will repeatedly look for uh, jugular venous pressures. You will look for what? Blood pressure, right? Repeatedly. And you will also heart sounds. So you keep on looking that uh, jugular venous pressure is not rising and blood pressure is not falling. Of course, you will also look for pulses, paradoxes and heart sounds are not becoming distant or muffled or may, heart sounds may be already distant and muffled when there is pericardial effusion. But you have to look for these two things specifically. There should not be rising JVP with loss of wide descent and there should not be falling blood pressure with Pulses paradoxes. If these things start appearing, the tamponade is there. Am I clear? And of course, again, don't forget the pulse or the tachycardia. I told you, without tachycardia, usually tamponade is not there. Almost all tamponade have tachycardia except tamponade with myxedema, uremia, drugs. on what drugs? Beta blockers drugs and and very terminal stage unfortunately right so you'll monitor the patient and of course you will do serial echocardiography right you will keep on doing serial echocardiography then we come to uh, pericardial synthesis if it really develops then we'll go for pericardial synthesis while before you put your needle in you must know the tamponade is not due to aortic dissection and you should know it is not due to rupture what post mi free wall rupture is that right after that these two things you are sure not there then you uh, plan for pericardial synthesis but before really I, I talk about pericardial synthesis i want to tell you something very interesting that even a very small amount of fluid is when it is released patient feels dramatically improved hemodynamically and even echocardiographically the question is that if someone has let's suppose 500 ml fluid and you just remove 100 ml and patient dramatically become better on hemodynamic parameter and echocardiograph why is such a small amount of aspiration of fluid can make better it, it is actually a volume pressure relationship i'm going to explain now volume pressure relationship of pericardial effusion suppose this is pericardial effusion and if we are measuring what is the relationship between volume and pressure? Let me make a... Here it is volume, progressively increasing volume and here is the pressure. In acute case, of course pressure will go rapidly up because it cannot stretch up. This is not linear. The relationship is not that you keep on increasing the volume in the same way it will, pressure will with the same proportion increase. No. Actually it is curvy linear. You know what does it curvy linear or it's up sloping very steep initially when pressure is increasing sorry initially when pericardial effusion volume is increasing the little increase in pressure but once it reached to maximum stretchability and further it cannot stretch a little increase in volume will take the pressure very high this type of uh, graph is called curvy linear of course this is an acute case let's suppose if i say here it is the uh, pressure is here the volume is suppose 200 ml and here volume is 100 ml then it is acute case but in chronic cases it because fluid is accumulating gradually 
it keep on stretching so lot of volume is accumulated accumulated and then suddenly when it cannot further what is this uh, stretch it will become like that right now the art of uh, understanding is this that let's suppose here pressure is your patient is at this situation that volume is 200 ml and pressure is let's suppose 20 right but if you bring it you move the volume you spread the fluid and volume move from 200 to 100 pressure will not become 20 to 10 it become maybe 4 it became drastically down right so sometimes uh, we or even you just remove 50 ml here I'm just giving an example it is 150 so pressure from 20 become less than 10 you are understanding in the same in chronic cases when you remove a small amount of fluid right volume has gone little from here to here this much volume is reduced but pressure is significantly reduced so that is why you will really see clinically an echocardiography that when you start aspiration even though it is advised you should aspirate as completely as possible but usually you aspirate it slightly or small amount patient blood pressure start going up pulses paradoxes start disappearing JVP start going down is that right am I clear in the same way if, if you are doing echocardiography while you know you should do echocardiography before and if you are doing echocardiography guided needle pericardiosynthesis you will really see that uh, while you are doing aspirating the fluid the features of echocardiography normalize that you will see that uh, right atrial colla diastolic collapse disappear right ventricular diastolic collapse disappear uh, motion of uh, interventricular septum become relatively normal and even fear of in a cava plethora or enlargement disappear am I clear so now what is pericardiosynthesis that is very simple that this is actually with a needle usually 18 to 22 gauge needle we aspirate the fluid what we do remember before aspirate, aspirating the fluid you must uh, put the patient on IV line preferably on saline or dextran or uh, depending upon his vo uh, volumic situation <coughs> right because we should give the saline why we are trying to prevent the diastolic collapses right so anyway so before doing pericardiosynthesis get IV line access put the saline arrange some blood cross match if there is enough time and usually there is not enough time if patient is really very advanced then uh, you can choose the approach you can go subzified or apical or parasternal depending upon your experience depending upon the localization of fluid you will keep the patient on uh, 45 angle and uh, I am not going to into detail of procedure right uh, but basic principle is that you will take 18 to 22 gauge needle push if suppose if you choose for sub z which is most commonly used you direct direct it at about 45 angle with the skin and needle should point towards the left shoulder right and then you start as soon as you uh, reach to pericardial cavity you start aspirating the fluid but important point is that you keep an eye rather both eyes on this fact that you may not be injuring the myocardium is that right of course patient is on the cardiac monitor and uh, on ECG myocardial injury changes if they appear it means you are messing messing up with the myocardium right so usually these uh, needles when you pass they should be uh, guided echocardiographically or fluoroscopically so you really know where you are putting your what is that needle right so you will aspirate the fluid as much you can and after that uh, some it's always wise to leave a multi hold catheter pigtail catheter or multi hold catheter so that fluid keep on draining right for few days and when further draining become uh, of course with the time if patient is getting better and you are treating the underlying cause also then further drainage will be become less and when lesser fluid is coming or very less fluid come you can pull out the drain also right so this is what is the basic things you do in pericardio synthesis but remember one thing if there's hemorrhagic fluid it should be dark colored and it should not clot please if it is bright colored and it clots 
you are doing something very wrong because usually if it is hemorrhagic fluid then it should be should be dark colored it means it is deoxygenated blood there and it should not be clotting it shouldn't have uh, clotting factors like a fresh blood but if you are bringing a fresh blood out and this is uh, bright red and well oxygenated looking and uh, with that there is you can say it clots also believe me there's something drastically going wrong right after that uh, then in those cases where there is recurrent tamponade that you drain and again it come so those cases where there is recurrent tamponade you cannot keep on aspirating because sometimes you are not there to aspirate and tamponade develop and kill the person then you have to be taken some more serious approach if there is recurrent tamponade or there is loculated fluid or if for diagnostic purpose you have to take the tissue sample then it's better to do surgical drainage surgical drainage is done by sub zephoid limited sub zephoid thoracotomy right just sub zephoid you put a small incision and you drain it well and also you take a tissue sample is that right and you drain it as completely as possible then sometimes in very case, those cases where repeatedly you can say fusion keep on coming like uh, cases of neoplasia right and uh, you know that again and again a fusion will develop then you develop pericardial window what is pericardial window that you open this area and op op remove a piece of pericardium and, and open a window between the pericardium and pleural space so we also called it creation of pericardio pleural fistula pericardio pleural fistula is that right so in this case pericardial fluid is being formed but it is being drained it is continuously draining into pleural space and mediastinal lymphatics and pleural lymphatics all of those areas very large area keep on absorbing that fusion so risk of tamponade is not there am i clear so what was the first thing pericardial synthesis that is needle aspiration with leaving a catheter for drainage or if there, there is going to be a recurrent and you have to take a tissue sample or the loculated you go for surgical drainage is that right and if there is very recurrent and long term fusion coming and coming then you go for pericardio pleural fistula that is pericardial window then some cases especially in malignant cases we do pericardio disses I will write it down pericardio synthesis, pericardio synthesis, then with drain, then what was the second? Yes, surgical drainage, surgical drainage, that is sub zephyed limited thoracotomy, right? These cases are done when recurrent or you want to remove as complete as possible or this loculated or you also want a tissue sample like diagnosis of tuberculosis then pericardial window pericardial window usually it opens in left pleural cavity right then you can also do pleurodesis 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 is in pericardial space you inject you introduce tetracyclines or bleomycin actually right bleomycin or tetracycline are the agent when you uh, push into this these are cyclorazine agent they irritate the pericardial lining and activate the fibrotic reaction and sphere fibrosis occur and that fibrosis make the pericardial layers adherent with each other and pericardial cavity disappears for example this layer and this layer they become fibrotic and they become sticky where the fluid will accumulate right so such cases especially in malignant cases to prevent repeated uh, pericardial effusion and tamponade risk of tamponade we can also do pericardio disease pericardio disease is a process in which we are putting a cyclorosing agent in pericardial sac like bleomycin or tetracycline or any other uh, cyclorosing agent so that cyclorosis of cavity occur and there is no more cavity is then it, is it, is it, is it uh, yes very good question 
uh, it can eventually do can develop not always but it can develop constrictive pericarditis but my friend I told you we are doing this case in terminal cases of cancer so usually they unfortunately most of the patient die before they develop the constrictive pericarditis right it is a sort of palliative measure in those patients which have very advanced degree of malignancy right in those cases we do it but you are right that uh, if you do over sclerosis or over sclerosis occur then you will get rid of uh, tamponade risk but you may end up with some sort of constrictive pericarditis you are right in that if patients survive long enough steroids. yeah we can use steroids you can use steroids to prevent what fibrosis fibrosis and that we will discuss in lecture of constrictive pericarditis right Okay, then we come to the last resort. Surgically remove the pericardium and throw it somewhere else out of the patient body. What is that called? Pericardiectomy. Peri, of course, you take care of the phrenic nerves, right? There are phrenic nerves on the sides. <laughs> Don't remove them along with the pericardium, right? So, pericardiectomy to me right this is the last resort when you cannot do anything you just remove the pericardium so that no pericardial sac no risk of fluid accumulation and no risk of tamponade and strangulation of the heart right uh, recently they have also introduced another method which is called balloon pericardiotomy okay that is balloon balloon peri cardiotomy uh, in this case actually they introduce with a small incision here they introduce a subsified they introduce a small deflated balloon into pericardial sac and then they inflate the balloon and then pull it out while it is coming out it produces a larger window in the pericardium right so that fluid does not accumulate there and keep on draining into medial sternal structures and uh, plural area so that risk of tamponade is reduced am i clear any question no question yes sir, it's a medical emergency if a patient wishes to be with the hemodynamic instability and the uh, foundation profile is very rich so if you cannot do medical assessment so what will you do okay he is saying that uh, it's an emergency situation in remote village where there are no medical facilities available and someone some family call our doctor and tell that this is our man and he is having some dyspnea and tachycardia and he looked neck veins are distended right and heart sounds are no more there so he strongly suspect there is cardiac tamponade and it's a very advanced stage and there's not enough time to come to the city and bring all these things and what you should do i'll say at least still if you can do pericardial synthesis you do it of course you will not do in a proper manner but at least you will find in your doctor should carry a box and in that box there should be at least a needle so right you push that needle in and even in with 5 ml 10 ml syringe in emergency to you try to bring the fluid out right so that i this is what i was trying to push in your mind even a small amount of fluid brought out will relieve significant relief in the patient until you can take the patient to better medical facility where we can take better care of the patient right class dismissed